Hey, how's it going everybody? In this video, I'm going to show you how to check your IVs in Pokemon Game Boy Advance games. So we're talking Ruby, Sapphire, Fire Red, Leaf Green, and Emerald. Also going to be giving you some tips on how to IV breed your Pokemon in these games. Before we get too deep into the video, I do want to acknowledge the people that have done the research and I guess figured all this stuff out because I didn't do it. I did pull a lot of information from the articles on Smogon's website. I will be leaving the links in the description to those specific ones if you want to read more intensely. This video is going to be more of a surface level explanation of a lot of things because I don't like to get too in the weeds of things and in numbers because to me it kind of ruins the fun of the game. But I at least want to know what's going on and make sure I'm kind of doing the right thing. You go pretty far down the, the rabbit hole with these sort of number crunching and statistics and all that stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm going to try and have some fun and make some cool Pokemon. If we take a look at the breeding guide part two on the Smogon website, they actually give a list of every single Pokemon and their stats, assuming they have 31 IVs in that stat. And I do also assume that this has like normal natures. So they do discuss in detail a little bit more you know, involving the natures. But in general, you can use this awesome table that they already kind of did to get a good idea if your Pokemon has max stats in certain traits. So hopping over to my game, I already caught a bunch of Ditto. I'm going to show you where to get this in Emerald. So my naming convention is a little weird, but just bear with me for a minute. I was going to do the Ditto example, but this table assumes that our Pokemon's level 5, which is good because in all these games, when you do hatch the eggs, they will be level 5. If we go to this Aaron over here as an example, I already IV checked this Pokemon and I will show you where to do that in a minute. It only works in Emerald, but this speed I've identified as perfect. If I use their cheat sheet and I go to Aaron, we see that the speed does have nine. So there I can kind of get a good estimate that that speed stat is at a max stat. Also, if we check the other stats, this Aaron has 21 HP stats at level five. And this chart says it actually should have max stats. Although I don't know if that's actually true because I did check this Pokemon, but I could have made a little mistake. If it has 13 attack at level 5, it has perfect. We got 12, kind of close, but, but that's a big difference. 16 defense would be max, but we have 14, 10, and 9. So yeah, the other stats are not maxed out, but we do have speed. Getting a little ahead of myself, using this table, you can use this throughout the all the Gen 3 games. Actually, I'm pretty sure even Gen 4 game, but we're only discussing Gen 3. You can use this table, kind of get an idea of, hey, does my Pokemon have max stats? So when you hatch your Pokemon, you can kind of do this quick estimate and kind of check this table to see, hey, does this Pokemon potentially have a max stat in something that I want? If that Pokemon does have a stat that you like, you can bring it to the Emerald game. Hopefully you have Emerald. And what you're going to want to do is fly down to Maw, not Maw, Maw, Battle Frontier. There's going to be this old guy in this building right over here. And this guy is going to judge your Pokemon and give you like much more, I guess, accurate somewhat of an estimate of your Pokemon stats. So we're going to talk to him really quick and then we'll actually decode what he actually says, what it all means. So we're going to select this Pokemon. This should have flawless, perfect IVs and speed. Hmm, blah, 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 blah. Quite impressive in ability. I would say the best ass, the best stat is speed. It's flawless. Okay, now he only gives one stat. So you kind of have to keep checking him just, or keep checking the same Pokemon and to see if there's another stat that might be also flawless or perfect. So I'm just checking a few more times just to make sure that that HP stat isn't popping up and it doesn't seem to be so I guess not. This guy gives out two pretty important things. The first thing he says has to do with the overall Pokemon and the IVs. The second thing he says is specifically the best stat of that Pokemon and roughly what that stat is. Unless it's perfect, then you know exactly. So for this example, he said that it was impressive in ability. If we go to this cheat sheet, impressive in ability ranges between 121 to 150 total IVs, which is going to equate to roughly 20 to 25 IVs per stat. Again, you can't see exactly, but at least you get a general idea. The next thing he said was it's flawless, it's perfection. That means that that stat that he said has 31 IVs, which is perfect, exactly what you want. The other things you can say is if it's average in ability, you're gonna range zero to 90 IVs. Better than average, you're looking at 91 to 120. And then outstanding is obviously what you want. It's the, the max you can get per the Pokemon, 151 to 186. So now we kind of explained roughly how to check your IVs and also where to go to kind of get more specific details on exactly what your IVs are in that Pokemon. But now kind of the more important thing is how do you actually get a Pokemon with good IVs? And that kind of requires a lot more time and it's a pretty iterative process. At least, at least that's what I found. And there's obviously ways you can probably cheat and stuff. You can you can download your file, put it on the computer, give your Pokemon, I, you know, there's things you could do. But if you're just trying to have some fun, enjoy the game, how it's kind of more meant to be played, I guess, and not really worry about how much time it's gonna take. 
gonna be giving you some of the tips, but again, you can get really deep down this rabbit hole and kind of min-max things in certain ways. I'll let you refer to those guides for more, I guess, in-depth information. I'm gonna give more of like a surface level approach on how you can do it and go about it. So you can breed in any of the Pokemon games. However, again, specifically I'm using Emerald because I am have the ability to have flame body and magma armor so I can reduce my egg steps. And also when I do want to check my Pokemon, I can more easily just run them over to the dude in bat the battle tower or the battle frontier and kind of get a more accurate estimate of that Pokemon. If you breed in other games, eventually you're probably going to want to transfer them to Emerald anyway. So I kind of just deleted that process and I just said, just do everything in Emerald. That's, that's, that's why I'm doing that. First thing you're going to want to do is get yourself a bunch of Ditto. So we're going to fly over to Fall Arbor Town. This is north of where Flanary is. You're probably going to want to have, okay, you're going to want two things actually. You're going to want to have a Pokemon with Fall Swipe because it's a lot easier to catch. Actually, you're going to want three things. Get yourself a bunch of Repeat Balls or Ultra Balls. I just use Ultra Balls, but Repeat Balls, whatever, would probably work more easily. And you're going to want, if you have a Pokemon with Synchronize with the ability you want, I did not do that because I'm dumb and I kind of forgot all about it. But if you got Pokemon like Abra, Kadabra, I think Ralts, Curlia, stuff like that, you're going to want to try and capture one of those with synchronized ability and then the ability you want because when you encounter a Pokemon in the wild, the Pokemon that you encounter has a 50% chance of like inheriting or appearing with that same ability as the Pokemon in your party. Again, I did not do that, but if I had to go back and do it, I definitely would. If you need a good fall swipe Pokemon, in the Savalt Canyon, I'm pretty sure we're talking like post, post, late game stuff. So in Fire Red Leaf Game, you probably have encountered some Marowak somewhere in the Savalt Canyon. You're just trying to get Larvitar or something, or that's like one of the best training places in the game. Get yourself a Marowak. They all have the False Swipe ability already on it, or the False Swipe move already on them. So that's one super easy way you can grab yourself a false swipe in Pokemon. If you don't already have a Slugma or a Macargo or something like that, just go grab one in the Fiery Path. Make sure it's got Flame Body on it, as you're gonna need it for breeding anyway. And now in Fall Arbor Town, you're gonna wanna run over here and go up into this dude's house. And you're gonna wanna go way in the back. And if you don't have access to this, it's probably because you haven't gotten that far in the game yet. I don't exactly know what the requirements are, but if you beat the Elite Four, you pretty much have access to this. You know, I don't do anything special. So in this zone, you're gonna see some Wizmer, but you're mostly gonna see Ditto. If you are running the Synchronize ability Pokemon, make sure that's first in your party, then you're gonna to wanna to switch out to your Marowak or whatever False Light Pokemon you have. So it's gonna take a little bit longer, but it actually will be shorter because you're saving a lot of time because you already know what exactly what Pokemon, or you're gonna have a higher probability of getting the nature you want on that Pokemon, which is very, really important, especially for breeding. I'm not gonna capture this ditto because I already have like a bajillion of them, but this is where you're gonna find the ditto. You're gonna wanna catch a lot of them. Like just, just fill up your whole box. It, it'll make things a lot easier. Once you got like 40 ditto, maybe not 40, but like 30. Assuming you're using the synchronized ability, get like 20 to 30. If you're not using synchronized, get like 60. You just save yourself, again, a lot of time. The thing is when you do this, you're not capturing the dittos at level five. So you can't actually use the cheat sheet from Smogon. So you will individually have to go check every single ditto to see which stat or what Pokemon has a good stat you want. During your first iteration of capturing all these dittos, you're pretty much gonna wanna just delete the natures that you don't care about. Like just save yourself the pain, just delete them, just release them. I kept all the admin, I kept all the jolly, I kept timid, I actually, so all these up here, these are all admin dittos. This box has all my good dittos already kind of sorted. So this robe here has all admin dittos. This is all modest, um, jolly, and then we have timid. Those are gonna be like my four main natures that I'm gonna wanna have. You're probably gonna wanna have some actually, yeah, you're definitely gonna wanna have some naming convention. So for me, I start with nature. I just put a letter to recognize the nature. I'm only gonna pick the natures I want. The second letter is one of the first things that the dude says when you go check your Pokemon. The second or the last thing gives the stat. So this would be attack and then it's obviously P for perfect. You can also do F for flawless and make up your own thing too. Anything that's not like P, I should probably delete. But anyway, keep all the dittos that your natures are good. Like you don't really wanna get rid of those. So even over here, I kept some like bold and stuff. I don't even, yeah, like some calm too, in case I wanted some like defense Pokemon. So once you captured a bunch of dittos, you got rid of all the natures that were kind of like, you just don't need. Then you're gonna to wanna to go fly over to where we had that old dude and just check every single one of them. If no stat is perfect and the Pokemon does not have outstanding ability, like overall stats, pretty much just delete it. It might sound a little harsh, but just, just delete it. You'll eventually, you will get a perfect stat Pokemon or have at least one perfect stat. 
when you finally do have a ditto with a perfect stat that you want or in general just any perfect stat just keep check maybe three to five times to ensure that the pokemon also doesn't have another stat because it's possible it happens you might get a little lucky i didn't really get too lucky in the first iteration but because again the old guy only shows one stat at a time once you have identified one of the pokemon with a good stat kind of just on the side i was keeping a tally like what pokemon it was what order in my bag it was then here's what you do you fly over to slateport city and you go right over to the building to the left and that's where the name raider is Talk to this guy, give it some naming convention, make sure that when you go back, you know exactly what ditto this was, what stats it had, yada, yada, yada. This does take a while. Like, it takes a while. Just be patient, put some music on, put on some movie, hang out. So by now you should have a bunch of ditto. You have now kept the ones with good natures and you've also kept and ID'd the ones with perfect stats. Now the next step is to take that Pokemon or a Pokemon that you want and now try to transfer the IVs from the Ditto to the Pokemon that you actually want. You obviously need to do this with the daycare and that is to the left of Mawile City. If you don't already have one, make sure you get yourself an Everstone. Put Give the Everstone to the female Pokemon with the correct nature you want or a Ditto. Those are the only two that can transfer the nature and that will have a 50% chance, I think roughly 50% chance of transferring to the baby. If you played through the game by now, you probably should have one. If not, you can get it in Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald in the Granite Cave. And I'm looking on Cerebi and I don't see exactly where to get it, but you can get one. I'm still in this process of trying to get a really good Pokemon. I'm doing Ag or Iron right now. So in the daycare right now, I have an admin Iron that's a, a male and it has perfect IVs and attack and speed. And I'm trying to get this ditto, which also is Advent Nature. That's where I have the Everstone on to transfer the nature and the HP perfect stat. And I'm hoping that this Aaron can also use the attack and speed stat so I can get some Pokemon with attack, HP and speed with Advent Nature. And I'm like hour, like uh, probably like eight hours, 10 to 10 hours with just these two Pokemon just trying to get them to, to, to mesh. It's, it's not really happening. Again, it's kind of like a probability thing, but hopefully it will eventually happen. So I guess backtracking a little bit. This might seem simple, but I'm just gonna explain it anyway. Take your Ditto that has a perfect stat and then take your Pokemon that doesn't have a perfect stat. Breed them. Keep breeding until the stat transfers over to that Pokemon. Hopefully the nature does too and it's a female because that will kind of speed up this process, but I've been kind of getting a little unlucky, but it is what it is. Because eventually you're going to really want to have not the Ditto, you're going to want to have two of the actual Pokemon just because it speeds up the egg time a lot. But it's kind of like an iterative process. You're kind of keep putting the better Pokemon in the daycare that has more of the perfect IVs. Another way to explain this too is if we go to the third part of the breeding guide, Smogon already did all the probabilities on like the eggs or the the moves transferring which is crazy so you can you can spend a lot of time in here kind of looking at the probabilities of x or what stats are going to transfer to what depending on what the parents have based on all that probabilities and stuff again it gets pretty in the weeds and to me it's fun to look at for a little bit but i'm not going to get too into detail because this kind of takes away from the game again for me but feel free to dive really into detail and check out all these so like i mean if you look at this odd the breed let's say you got attack flaws hp and speed sorry hp and special attack let's say your parents have both of them like both both at perfect stats the odds of transferring that to your baby is one in 12 pretty high stats the odds obviously increase if you don't necessarily have both stats. So yeah, I can I should probably find the probability of what I'm trying to do. But anyway, you can go down a rabbit hole with this stuff, but I'll leave it at that. Just to kind of recap, you can check your IVs when is level five by using that table that Smogon generously provided to the world. Even though you do that, I would still go check with the dude in Emerald because he's got a lot of knowledge. That's how you check your IVs and you obviously want him to say flawless in the stat and you want to have as many of those stats as possible. You're going to have to keep asking the guy over and over again because he only gives out one stat and he will only give out another stat if there's an identical stat of that Pokemon, if that makes sense. When you start breeding, you're going to have a lot of dittos. You're going, to, you're going to make sure you have a Pokemon with synchronized with the nature you want to more easily attract the ditto with the nature. You're going to have a Pokemon with false swipe and you're going to need a lot of repeat balls or a lot of ultra balls, but repeat balls work really well. Also, you're going to need a Pokemon with flat flame body or magma armor 
to help reduce those eggs. You know, put that in the start, the, the first slot in your Pokemon slot when you are hatching the eggs. And then you just keep iterating the process and hopefully you get a little lucky. It's kind of just a numbers game. You can obviously do some cheating and stuff like that, but I think if you've gotten this far in this video, you're in it for a different reason. You want the self-satisfaction of crafting a perfect Pokemon, not just like cheating sort of, but hey, people have different experiences from this game and want to get different things out of it. I like the adventure and journey and having fun and pretending like I'm like a kid or something playing these games. And I wouldn't really want to cheat because that kind of takes away from the beauty of this game for me. Definitely don't be too hard on yourself. This is, again, it's it's supposed to be kind of difficult. You're 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 crafting a Pokemon with good stats. This this is like this IV breeding in combination with EV training is like the in this game is like the equivalent of like trying to train the best Pokemon you can in a sense because you're actually going for like the best stats. To me, that's kind of cool. Anyway, I'm gonna stop rambling. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you do like this content, definitely check out some other videos on the channel. I will be doing more Pokemon games because they're cool. Take care, everybody. I will see you around. If not, hopefully you enjoy playing Pokemon. It's a great game.